World Bank today released a new Nigeria public finance report. That report says that the country needs urgent macroeconomic and fiscal reforms in order to lift the country's development outcomes, which are severely constrained by insufficient resources. The new report was presented at an event held by the World Bank and the Ministry of Finance, the Debt Management Office, and other government organizations. Here are excerpts from some of those suggestions for the Nigerian government. It's a big part of what we can offer and the kind of support we provide is concessional financing. And in the case of Nigeria, which is in the last, uh, since December, as uh, February of 2020 to uh, now, we've managed to provide about $9 billion in concessional financing for a variety of uh, development needs. But my ambition actually and my aspiration is that we're not just seen as a financier, that we're seen as a true partner who has, is trusted and is credible in helping Nigeria move forward in meeting the various challenges it faces in all the ways that we can help beyond financing. Okay, through you know, our bringing in experience from other countries, through providing, uh, sharing some of our analysis, helping really get in the kitchen and think through solutions for the challenges that Nigeria faces. So the report that you we're launching today is in that category of support beyond financing. It's, it's really, it is our assessment. We work very closely. This was done at the request of the Honorable Minister, and then we work very closely with various arms of the federal government, obviously the Budget Office of the Federation being key, uh, National Bureau of Statistics, the Office of the Accountant General. And I should say in this, uh, especially because this is, I believe, the first time that we're able to put together a consolidated picture of the overall financial uh, fiscal uh, position of the Federation in the sense that it includes information not only on the federal government, usually that's very readily available uh, because of the excellent MTF and fiscal reviews that are presented every year, but it also includes data on the fiscal position of the states. Okay, so you can for the first time ever, you can say, I, I've heard DG Ben say many times, you know, yes, the federal government contributes, actually I heard him this morning say that, <laughs> you know, federal government contributes X amount to health, but remember that the federal government is actually, health is a state in, on the uh, constitutional list, health is in the category of what states should deliver, and so states are also contributing to health. So DG Ben, for the first time, you will see, well, you've seen the report, draft report, you know, how much it is that the federal and the states together spend on health, okay? So that's the reason that the Honorable Minister asked us to uh, work on this report is because, as you all know, Nigeria has huge development financing needs. Uh, it's the largest country in Africa. It also happens to have the largest number of extreme poor. And there are many, many areas where Nigeria is on top of the wrong league tables globally. And so those are the development financing needs. That's what the government, the state needs to deliver. At a minimum, basic, obviously, law and order, basic services, human capital, investments in people, basic education, primary health care, as well as investments in core public infrastructure, rural roads that connect farmers to markets, things like that, energy access, right? Uh, but over the last four decades, but increasingly so in the last decade, Nigeria has not been able to afford the, what it needs to spend, that what the government needs to spend to meet those de basic development needs that only government can provide. There are all kinds of other areas, as the medium-term plan makes clear, all kinds of other areas where it's the private sector. Government needs to sort of not only get out of the way, kind of facilitate private firms to come in and, and play a role. And, and provide the financing. But there are some core areas where only the state, only the government can provide. And for that, Nigeria needs fiscal resources. Needs to, you'll hear the highlights from Alex. Uh, I'll spend a lot more. Uh, but really, it cannot continue to spend more by just borrowing more. Uh, even though DG Patients is always very good at that. But <laughs> uh, so th then it becomes a matter of the re fiscal resources that Nigeria does have, it has to spend better 
and so you will hear some ideas. Uh, most of you will not be surprised that they're the usual elephants in the room that we keep talking about. Uh, but in the report, there are actually much more that you'll see beyond that, more granular suggestions about specific types of programs. And then it needs to raise more fiscal resources. Okay, just, uh, and there, you know, one comes up against, and there again, you'll get some highlights, but you also, there's more detail. But these are kind of more technical details. At the end of the day, we're technocrats, economists, but the solution, the way forward, really has to be a political, uh, almost a compact between the government and, and the people, because there, you know, you've all heard about the trust deficit. So if you, you know, if you want to persuade various constituencies that they need to contribute more to the fiscal resources by paying more taxes or by foregoing a PMS subsidy, they have to have some confidence that those funds will be used to benefit the public. And that trust isn't there now. In, in a normal course of events, you do this sequentially, kind of focus on quality of spending and then you know, earn the trust and then move to the revenue mobilization agenda. The core message, if there's one thing uh, I hope you will uh, take away, even if you're not entirely persuaded, at least think about, is that Nigeria right now is in a position where it cannot afford to do things sequentially. So the, the, the overall uh, kind of context um, here is that um, in contrast maybe to some of the other uh, recent events of it like this one, you know, this report is very focused on uh, uh, public um, uh, finance management, so fiscal uh, issues, um, and, uh, you know, goes into a fair amount of uh, detail uh, across many of the, the key areas in, uh, in, in public finance uh, management. Uh, but, of course, that is embedded in a bigger development context. Um, and so our, our, our starting point in identifying, you know, what are really the key uh, areas of focus to get into uh, in the report um, have to do with Nigeria's overall development uh, context. Um, and there, across an array of indicators, you know, we do see that there's enormous development challenges, as I think, you know, everyone is, is, is well aware. Um, and unfortunately, the, uh, the direction of travel uh, in many of those um, is, also, is also challenging. Um, so, for example, uh, looking at uh, uh, the degree to which young Nigerians have access to school, to healthcare, uh, the World Bank runs a human capital index, uh, and you'll see that relative to a child having uh, full access to those kinds of uh, key services as a, as a young person, um, the expectation is they'd only be about 36% as productive as they would be under conditions of full access. And that's actually one of the lowest levels anywhere uh, in the region and, and worldwide. That's called the Human Capital uh, Index. Similarly, you know, high rates of stunting, over a third of uh, Nigerian kids under five. So that discussion so far is focused sort of on allocation of spending uh, issues. Um, within each of those allocations, even were uh, spending to be reallocated uh, in more you know, productive directions, uh, we also wanted to make the point that um, the continual benefits to be had from working towards increasing efficiencies in various categories of, of spending, uh, so-called technical efficiencies. Um, and a nice example of this, or important example, is on uh, personnel costs. These are also referred to as rigid expenditures because they are hard uh, to, uh, to address in a more sort of discretionary uh, way. Uh, but the point is that spending better is also about maintaining uh, discipline and recurrent expenditures. And you can see personnel expenditures showing a tendency to kind of drift higher uh, as a share of revenues um, and leaving, you know, not much space uh, for more discretionary spending, including on, on top priorities. Um, and then just to complement uh, these points on uh, quality of, of spending, uh, a related point is the benefits to be had from uh, uh, work to improve uh, quality of budgeting. So the chart on the left is showing the gap that's opened up in recent years between budgeted uh, fiscal deficits 
and the actual outturns, the fiscal deficits at the end of the year. That gap has widened uh, fairly dramatically, uh, and that's important and has fiscal implications because it then forces the government uh, to go and uh, finance that unbudgeted shortfall using ways and means financing through CBN. Uh, so the chart on the right is showing the accumulation of, of that financing. That is rather costly financing, and it also you know, feeds into inflation dynamics because of uh, the, the, the impact it has on, on the money supply. Mm -hmm.